A lot of it lately has been history. It's a lot of, lot of what my recent focus on has been the fact that they've manufactured most of our history. It appears that history has changed. And it's interesting because history is what first got me into this whole thing. And uh, so I've kind of done full circle and come back to history, which is, which is good. But, um, you know, the main problem, the main focus at the moment is this digitization of everything and 5G, which is a real concern for everybody. I think people should be paying attention to it. That's basically what's happening. I mean, the, the cryptocurrency guys have got a lot of really good ideas, but they're not looking at the social crediting system and everything that's rolling out over the top. Now, it's because everyone's trying to extricate their self from the system using digital means, but they're only really focusing on the, the fiat part of it, the, the money control part of it. But there's a lot more aspects than that. I see it as a very positive time, a time when the veil is falling down. Everything we've been talking about for the last you know, 20 or 30 years warning people of, it's right there in their face now. They can't deny it anymore. It's no longer a theory. And it is a conspiracy and it's affecting everybody. So, yeah, I mean, I think we're at one of the most important times in human history. I've had to kind of put all my other stuff down. I want to get back into history and talk about all sorts of stuff. But there's just been so much stuff happening every day. It's been difficult to keep up with the, the state of the world. It's just uh, it's, it's gone to the next level all around the planet. I think a lot of people are seeing this and that's why we're going to see a lot of people stand up and just say enough is enough. I was out in the forest with my mother and, and uh, first time I'd ever been to the forest. And I said, this is incredible up here. Let, 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 why can't, why, let's, let's come and live here. And she said, well, we can't live here. I said, why not? There's nobody else living here. And she said, well, we don't own the land. I went, own the land? What do you mean own the land? And she said, well, you've got to own the land. And I said, who owns the land? And she said, the government owns the land. I said, how did they get it? And she said, you'll understand when you get older. I was shocked when I found out that we actually had to pay to put a roof over our head. We actually had to pay money to, 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 to buy land. You think people thought they could own a part of the earth. I thought I, I was horrified by the whole thing. So I, I kind of sat back and I, I just watched from there. And I thought, this is a madhouse. People always think that they're in the minority and they get kind of scared to stand up. So, you know, if people, if people can get over that little hump, I think we're going to reach a tipping point where people are going to realise that it's now or never. They have to stand up. So I think, you know, ultimately this is a test and we're going to get through it. I think the human race will you know, overcome this tyranny eventually. I think we will. There will be some light through it. Maybe they will just, you know, wake up and, and see what's really going on. And we don't need all of them to do it. We just need the people who are awake to get organised and you know, bickering with each other and put down their personal differences and get some focus and uh, call these, these governments out for being an abuse of the office that they hold, express a loss of confidence, their ability to govern and dismiss these people, institute real and honest government and lead us back to a point of safety. And that Vatican priest was absolutely correct. This is a war that is going on, folks. And the question is, you know, if a Vatican priest can see it and start speaking out about it, what is the matter with the people in the general public out there? But things are getting crazier and crazier, folks, which is why I just thought I'd pop up and have a quick couple of words about what's going on. This isn't being done for your health, folks, and the level of propaganda is just through the roof. But they're really just trying to isolate people. You know, that's what all of this is about. Isolation, getting people scared of each other. So many people are scared. You know, I walk past some places, you know, I go out and I walk down the street and, and people literally move away if you haven't got them on. It's really, really strange, folks. I'm concerned. Um, I don't do fear, but I, I, I'm concerned. I'm definitely concerned. Uh, I'm so concerned with the way the country is going. There's going to be a lot of people, clearly, who are feeling fearful, feeling anxious, don't know what the frig is going on. When you say you don't do fear... What do you mean by that? How, 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 how do you deal with it? How are you managing it? You face infinity without flinching, brother. You walk the path of the warrior. I think people are seeing the need to do this. There's huge common law groups springing up all around. So, you know, perhaps we will see some sort of a pushback. There was a Zoom meeting here in Australia, of common law group, you know, like 10,000 people in the Zoom call the other day. Um, it's, it's really, um, there's an underground movement that's happening. 
And uh, there's a lot of attempts to undermine that as well, but there is an underground uh, resistance happening. I think it's happening in all countries. This time is so important, what's happening to humanity. Like, um, I think we've been given a choice. We can go in either one of two directions and we really have to put down the fear and realize the choice is ours to make. A lot of people aren't seeing that, they're waiting to be saved. And I think that's a big problem. People have to realize what's happening and embrace it themselves. I think a lot of what we're seeing here, I mean, humanity is, is right on a cusp at the moment. We really could go in, in either direction. You know, with all the technology that's coming online, it's all very well to think that, well, this can just free us. But unfortunately, people's hubris may get them into a little bit of trouble because you've got to take into account the fact that the world is run by criminals who simply don't want to free us. And that is currently who's in control of a lot of the technology. So it's time for people to really step up to the plate with this and realize that we have to start embracing this ourselves and we have to be the ones that are pushing in the direction that we want. But um, you know, the main problem, the main focus at the moment is this digitization of everything and 5G, which is a real concern for everybody. I think people should be paying attention to it. And uh, what about, uh, like you mentioned technology now, the blockchain is a real game changer. Well, the blockchain could be a game changer depending on how we play it because people's hubris, again, may be what gets them in trouble with this. You know, when we go to the blockchain and we start to automate everything, which is what seems to be happening, everything's becoming automated, you know, we're in danger of trading one type of government for a new type of government, which will simply be an AI government. And if that government is run by artificial intelligence, and it's, it's really going to depend on how that operates. That's basically what's happening. I mean, the, the cryptocurrency guys have got a lot of really good ideas, but they're not looking at the social crediting system and everything that's rolling out over the top. Now, because everyone's trying to extricate their self from the system using digital means, but they're only really focusing on the, the fiat part of it, the, the money control part of it. But there's a lot more aspects than that. You know, there's new systems coming in, which I intend to talk about in my talk today, like a social crediting system that is coming online. It's, it's already online in China whereby they will penalise what you can and cannot buy depending on what your political are. Um, you know, in that sort of a situation, it doesn't matter how much money you may have in, on the blockchain or in Bitcoin, if you can't spend it on things because your person is simply denied certain services due to your political views, due to a social crediting system, which uh, is, is what governs purchases, not necessarily the accumulation of wealth, but what governs purchases of uh, airline tickets and things like this, then that's a danger that we've, we've got to take into account as well. So again, it's going to depend on how we play it. The blockchain could be good, but we've got to, we've got to look at how those who are currently in control of things wish to play this and what moves they're making to control the blockchain. Not again by controlling the blockchain, but by controlling what you can and cannot purchase due to your political views.